Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10 o'clock breakout session of the Open Simulator Community Conference 2014. As a reminder to our in-world and web audiences, you can view the full conference schedule on our website at conference.opensimulator.org. And you can post your questions in local chat on the Ustream chat or tweet your comments using the hashtag OSCC14. This hour, we are happy to introduce Krister Lindstrom, who will be presenting for Dialogue in Centra and Open Sim for real-time planning in four Swedish cities. Krister Lindstrom is the founder of the Institute for Sustainable Transportation in Sweden, co-founder of the International Institute of Sustainable Transportation in USA, the General Transportation Fund USA and Centra Incorporated USA, and for Dialogue AB Sweden. Krister was earlier the main project manager for Uppsala PRT study, financing, simulation, visualization, and implementation, and is currently doing 4D simulation and financing analysis for ATN, light rail, and other modes of transportation for cities in the U.S. and Sweden. Welcome, Krister Lindstrom. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really happy to be here, and uh, I've been listening to a few presentations earlier. It's been very interesting, I have to say, and it's, do, you guys are doing a wonderful job at this conference. Okay, so let's go on with it. Uh, my name is Krista Lindström, uh, and I work primarily with city development using the open SIM-based uh, technology. We have added technology called the Citra, and we're selling it mainly here in Sweden now under the brand for Dialog. So what we call it is city development using 4D models. Um, so what is the idea behind this? Well, it is to have an updated quality model, a 4D model of a city for development, any change concerning the urban landscape, transportation, energy use, etc. And we're using some, what we call in city technology. It's basically open sim. And on top of that, a series of functions and processes to cre create a virtual city in a, in a way that is believable for all stakeholders. I might add also, it's okay if anybody has a question during this presentation to, to ask away. I, it's, I don't mind being interrupted. Um, so what is the benefits in, in, in this kind of technology in urban planning? As you well know, there's a lot of 3D models out there for different kinds of projects. And I think all of you uh, more or less have seen different kinds of movies and 3D and, 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 and um, animations or, or just uh, pictures of different kinds of development going on near you where, you where you live. And this is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. However, it's very difficult for people at early stage to really understand what this is all about. It's also pretty expensive to do those models. And the main problem doing 3D models is you make them once and then you throw them out the window and never use them again. So what we do is that we make real-time visualization of volumes and concepts as early stages, at much earlier than most developers and cities do. And this means that all stakeholders be aware of each other's intentions instantly and, and at an early stage. So even if it's just an idea of possibly or maybe developing a, a land, a piece of land somewhere, you can actually make a mark there that with a simple volume or a simple box or whatever that there is an intention there. And this also simplifies coordination between engineers and architects. Today, there's a lot of people involved in the process from the early idea to develop land until the very end of the development when you go into facilities management. And there's a lot of uh, mistakes and, and problems in that process. And it can take 10 to 20 years from idea to actually build something and start managing it. It's important to have a constant flow over time of information. Um, since we're using OpenSim, we get for free, more or less, simulation of shadows, light sources, and day and night. And this is something that is usually you have to add extra uh, consultants and people involved in those processes. But this is kind of given with this uh, already at very early stage, just with a simple box of volume. You can early on see how many stories can I go up before I start to have a shadow impact on the close neighbors, for example. 
Uh, we also added uh, traffic management and simulation for traffic with physics and sound. Uh, we, you will see an example of that later on. Uh, for example, we had done it very early in, in this when we started this company for ATN or PRT systems. And we recently did it for a city of Uppsala using, uh, for, for light rail. And also one thing that is growing quite uh, fast is built-in surveys and voting technology. So we can put in alternatives into the model, alternative A, B, or C in real time. So people can actually go in and see the different options. And this is very interesting in, in early stage where you want to early on see what is, it, what is possible for this uh, site here and the different kinds of buildings or even different kinds of transportation systems. It can be pretty simple things. How do we limit transportation and car traffic on, on a busy street or the other way around? How can we increase it? And there, there can be different kinds of options. So what is it, what we do? Well, we coordinate all the documents and drawings from all stakeholders. So that's where we start. We make a model of the city and we take all the data we can get and put it into the model. As we've been doing that, we then start to actual project management and all the changes and updates and insertions of different kinds of ideas and con concepts into the model. We make sure that those changes get, everybody involved get messages and we distribute those messages, messages and any follow-up to the stakeholders. We, of course, do training and supporting uh, users on an ongoing basis. There are very different levels of understanding, but I have, most of the people understand the technology, but a lot of them actually need some help, especially with simple things like navigation. And of course, we are constantly developing new tools and processes to increase quality, improve modeling speed. And this is crucial for us, as the first projects we did early on took a long time. And, and even if the result was pretty good, um, it, it, it took way too long to make a business out of it. So I'm going to give you four city examples. And the first example is the city of Södertälje. Södertälje is a community or a town uh, approximately uh, half an hour south of Stockholm, Sweden. It has about 100,000 inhabitants. And they are one of the nine core regions around Stockholm that has been decided politically to, to be emphasis on their, their development, transportation into a more, much more suburban uh, green area and actually city core. And what you see in this picture in front of you is one of the key parts of the city. It's kind of a place where God, that was kind of forgotten place. It's an old girl's school at the top of a hill called the Orion Hill. And this was a key part of the city that they really need to get developed. So on the left side, you see a white building that has been drawn by an architect. And when we started this project, we were mainly talking only to the developer. As this project grew, we got more and more interest from the city. And now we have a lot of different buildings and several projects ongoing in the same model. When we did this, we did this very much together with students and uh, the University of Gävle, north of Stockholm. Uh, we have a set of students there, seven students, that have specialized in city development and urban planning. Um, when we did that, we started with taking photos um, and, and how to, um, to work this. And, uh, um, it was myself, you see a photo to the left, myself with three of the students, and uh, we took photos, we did a survey of the entire area, used maps, it made a lot of notes, and then we all went back home and started to do the actual modeling. In the lower right, you see a photo, uh, it's actually Cecilia and Johanna, um, who were invited, we were actually invited by the city to do a presentation a couple of months later in front of 10,000 people who were having a big party in the middle of town. Uh, and the city decided to raise um, a, a tent, quite a big tent, uh, where we put in Oculus Rift, we put in screens, we put in projectors over so three different types of presentations, live, movie, and through Oculus Rift live to show the work we've done. 
it was we had, it was so many people wanting to see this and participate in the development of the city. We had to uh, make a long queue. Actually, it was pretty interesting to see the interest, and the city was very very happy with this. Uh, we got over 500 people participating and commenting on the development of the city using our models. It was a great three days we had there. Okay, so. Um, Another project is in the city of Uppsala. This is actually the first place uh, where we started doing modeling professionally. And uh, after a couple of years, we discussed with the city the possibility of using the model to put in a light rail. So this study was very different from Södertälje. In this case, it was all about how could we put in that light rail with the new stations, a new rail, a couple of options. What you see here is, is actually one of the typical examples of this study. Uh, it, the rail is not supposed to go left, left and right. It's actually two options, and the politicians wanted to know what options do we have and what impact does those options have in the model. So we did model light rail going both left and right in, in this corner of the city. Um, it was interesting in many ways, and this was actually used to make a um, more um, in-depth study of the actual cost of the system. And thanks to this, uh, they were able to, one of the other consultants, to pinpoint a lot of trouble and, and problem areas they haven't anticipated before. And it all ended up about one and a half month ago into an extent, uh, extended study to the city with financial analysis, uh, recommendations for where to put in the track, uh, options for lighting and risk zones where people might get killed or hurt if you didn't take uh, some precaution regarding safety. This was a very interesting project. This was also, by the way, done mostly by students and, and myself. Um, another much um, simpler example, but still very interesting, is was converting a street in uh, very close to Stockholm, only 10 minutes south of the Stockholm city core, from being a very busy, um, problematic road. It's going straight through the most center core of the city, um, where you had a lot of um, cars and buses, and the street really needed some kind of rejuvenation. And there was a lot of discussions at City Hall how to do this. So we were invited to do a virtual 4D study of the street. And what we did, we put in a new tiles on the street, a new pavement, uh, a couple new flowers, and a lot of different options in how to see this and how it could look like. Uh, this will probably be extended, this project, next year. And we're looking forward to that with a larger model. OK. And then uh, we have the most recent project. And this is the, by far the most extensive project we're having right now. It's still ongoing. It's also been extended with the second phase. This is the, the 15 different developers that needed to coordinate all the, the projects and the new construction in the city. The total investment just for this area is close to $1 billion. So it's a quite a big responsibility we have here. And the, the, our job is to continuously update the model with new ideas from the architects, new concepts. Um, um, we are about to change the roads and how they could be there. We are about to change how the public transportation should be. Uh, we expect uh, next year to start to add solar and other modes of sustainable energy into the area, etc. Um, we also recently got the second order, as I said, for the second phase at the station area. We're going to have a, a completely new transportation hub with the high-speed rail station and designed by quite a famous architect. Uh, her name is uh, Zaha Hadid, and uh, she's based in London. So, what about um, the companies? It's for Dialogue and Citra. And then Citra, to begin with, is actually the technology company. That is, Citra Inc. is based in California. And um, it was the result of uh, the technology we developed together with University of California, Irvine, of course, uh, Crystal Lopez. And um, uh, we have done that and still doing uh, technology development, of course. 
for dialogue is based in Sweden is, and is based on the technology. We don't do any technology development at all, but what we do, we use the technology and push it as far as we can to use it for collaboration and for developers and cities interested in how to develop the city core. We were established in September 2013. Today we have about three time full full time uh, employees, and we're using a lot of students in our work. Um, we have ongoing projects both in Sweden and USA. Most of them are in Sweden, but those have approved projects in the United States. Um, it's led mostly by me and Johan here in Sweden, and by Mr. Ron Swanson in the U.S. in, in Santa Cruz. We're happy to say um, we were interviewed by Maria Korolov. Um, almost two years ago, and she asked me um, how much revenue we expect to see. I said about 250,000, and I'm happy to say that actually what we reached. And we expect to double that every year from 2015 to 2017. And I see no reason to doubt that right now. It's, it's uh, quite an expanding business, and we are very happy about it. We're also looking into different kind of partnering programs for modeling of cities around the world because we think this technology has a, not only a very nice potential, but it also it could be something that a lot of people can be involved with and actually make quite a lot of money out in different places in the world. Um, it's just very brief, the technology overview. Most of you people are probably pretty versed and very knowledgeable in this, but I still just want to go through it. So we use open source for all basic applications, like OpenSIM, for example. Uh, we have additional code for city development and planning. It's, of course, server-based with the, with the viewer client. We never, ever charge for software. It's a very, very strict policy we have. We will never, ever charge for software. It's based on Windows and Mac, and of course can be used with Locus Rift. Our revenue model is based on the access of the models, the training and support. So it's actually developers, cities, architects, etc., that are paying us to do this. Uh, we have recently developed, we are underway to develop two extra viewers. Uh, one you know about, I think was mentioned by Krista yesterday, uh, an idea I got uh, a couple of months ago, the Unlook viewer. And this is something we hope should be used by a lot of people in the future, and I hope it's going to be, uh, be developed and ready pretty soon. And we also have a Simplify WebGL enabled browser viewer for small simulations. That is not entirely ready yet, but we hope to have that available in the near future also. Uh, as with OpenSIM, of course, full immersion technology for simulation, visualization, service, and more. Uh, Real-time simulation, sound, light, movement, and communication, just like OpenSim. And uh, we're very happy to have this uh, ability to of scale from going from tenth of an inch up to several square miles. The biggest model we have today is a couple of square miles. I don't know exactly the measurements, but it's pretty big. Um, so, why are we doing all this? Well, there is a uh, pretty strong sense of urgency in what, why we do this and why we're involved in this. Because we think that today's world is in strong need of, to use our resources in a much better way. Uh, we need really to take better care of both ourselves and most of the things around us. How we live, how we move around, and how we use energy, land, water, etc. This is really important. And we can also observe that the total world population is actually slowly stabilizing. Um, so, and people are moving more and more into urban areas, and, and they are more and more becoming middle class. Um, even if you go to smaller villages in the middle of Africa, or, or um, some places that were quite uh, um, unreachable in South America three decades ago, you will find computers, TV, internet connections, and all. It's pretty. It's a big change we're seeing here, and um, the technology of communication is down through computers, phones, and tablets, is ready available, and they're using it. And of course, for for communication above all. Um, the current tools for planning and and participation in any urban development process. They're all, they're all those tools today, with very few exceptions, 
they're made for us for, for a sprawling world with endless resources. They're not made for today's challenges and today's reality. And, and as we do know that the way we live has to change. And that means also the tools really need to change. That's really important. So we do this because we believe that working with open and transparent technology, young motivated students and experienced developers is a powerful way to address the needs of today and the near future. We strongly believe that it's only through shared power and democracy processes that society can develop into a sustainable place for all. That's the only way we can do, and we can get this going. We have a lot of things, uh, you, people to solve all over the world. I just want to have a final note. Um, you people behind OpenSim and the entire open source community, you're just plain amazing. You know, there's so much unselfish work that has been done, and the work in Citra, the technology we developed on top of it, and the sales and, and the, the communication process that we have with developers and cities for, from for dialogue, we would never exist. And we are not be able to do what we do today. We're extremely thankful, and we will do all our power to give back to this community. So um, with this, I would like to say thank you and open up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Krister. Uh, I do have one question. Uh, you said you have some YouTube videos. Was your present? Oh yeah, work thank you. That you do. Oh yeah, good good reminder. So uh, this is, this is a lot of talk about what is done, but I think it's much better if you see it. Um, so the 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 link is I don't know how to type this. Can I type it into the chat window maybe? Um, so yes. if, it, if if you search for in Citra videos at YouTube, you will find a channel where you can see this. I see a couple of questions regarding students. So right now, the students that are involved in this, is there are several universities. It's University of Uppsala in, in north of Stockholm, University of Gävle in, in even further north. Um, and those two universities are either linked to city development um, uh, and architecture or uh, environmental issues. We have the KTH in Stockholm um, from the also city development and urban, uh, urban uh, innovation, uh, the faculty of urban innovation. We also have the gaming university of Uppsala that's located with an outlet in the island of Gotland in, in, uh, in Sweden. In the U.S., uh, we have the city, uh, um, sorry, the University of uh, San Jose, San Jose State University. Uh, in, in the past, we also had some, some connections, of course, with UCI, University of California, Irvine, and Krista. Uh, we have today just about to start a project with University of California, Santa Cruz. And uh, we expect also in the near future to be involved with the project the University of Illinois and Southern Illinois. Uh, with a couple of architectural and city development uh, and, and also transportation development students. Uh, we expect to have may, way more and many more universities and, and different kind of faculties around the world to be involved also pretty soon. Okay, excellent. Are there any more questions? Please uh, send us some questions through the local chat and Twitter or Ustream. Okay, I don't really have much more. So if there's not any more questions, I, I think we can round this up. Okay. Thank you, Christopher Lindstrom, for a terrific presentation. As a reminder Thank to you. our audience, you're welcome. It, it was. I really enjoyed it. You can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. In this room, the next session will be, Does OpenSim Have the Critical Mass to Survive? And again, thank you, Christopher Lindstrom, for an excellent presentation. We really appreciate it, enjoyed it. We'll be back shortly for the much. next session. You're welcome.